Hey everyone, welcome to part 128 of my Pokemon game series in GNT. So this will be the final video for the series on YouTube. However, I'll still be releasing tutorials for the series on Patreon based on the request from supporters as many Patreons support me just for the series. But on YouTube, this will be the final video and I'll be moving on to new tutorial series here. So let's start this tutorial. So in this video, We'll be creating a main menu like this from which we can either start a new game or continue our progress by loading the previous save. So when you play the game for the first time, the continue button will be disabled because you don't have a save yet. But if you save the game and then restart it, then you can see that this continue button is active and we can continue the game from our previous save. So let's look at how to implement this. As always, Thanks to all the Patreon supporters for making the series possible. Be sure to check out the Patreon page if you want the complete project files of the series. So let's create our main menu. So we need to create a new scene for that. So under the scenes folder, I'll go ahead and create a new scene and I'll call this as main menu. Okay. So here, let me just add a background image i'll just name this as background all right let me make it stretch the entire canvas and i just change the color a bit like that okay so next we need to add the menu in here so it will be a selection ui with multiple items like continue new game and all that so what we can do is we can just copy one of the selection uis that we have we can just copy the menu controller we don't have to set it up from scratch so i'll just copy it from here and i'll paste it onto our canvas in the main menu scene okay so it got paste it over here so I'll just resize it and we just need three items in it so I'll name the first one as continue the second one will be new game and the third will be something like credits I'm not going to implement the credits page but you could go ahead and do that if the user selects this item all right so this comes with a script called menu controller we don't want to modify the script because it is already being used by the game menu so instead i'll create a new script for our main menu so let me go to scripts and inside the ui folder i'll just create a new script called main menu controller All right, so the script will be a lot similar to our menu controller. We'll have to make it inherit from the selection UI. Okay, and let me just get rid of the default code. So here I have to import the generic selection UI namespace. And next, like we do from the menu controller, we can set the items from the start function. Okay, so here let me just import link. So now we can replace the menu controller script with the main menu controller script. Okay, so up next we have to call the handle update function of our main menu controller script right so usually it will be called from different states but in the case of main menu it's just a simple ui right so we don't want to create state stack and all that here so i'll call the handle update of the selection ui directly from the update function of the main menu controller okay i'll call it directly from here 
So we can just try testing this now. And you can see that we have a null reference error. So that's because we don't have access to the global settings because that's a script that is attached to our game controller and we don't have the game controller in the scene. We only have it in the gameplay scene, right? So what we can do is we can add the essential objects to our main menu scene and we can just remove it from the gameplay scene, okay? We just need this in the first scene that will be loaded. So before I add it on to the main menu scene, I'll make sure that all the changes are applied to the prefab and then I can just disable it from here and then add it to the main menu scene. So the prefab will be inside the main folder. So let me just drag and drop it onto our main menu scene. Okay. And I'll remove the main camera here because we already have a camera inside the essential objects. So now we shouldn't get that null reference error. Okay, we don't have that null reference error. And our selection is working. All right. So from here, if the user presses continue, we have to load their save slot. If they press new game, then we have to delete the save slot and load a new game, right? So let's go ahead and implement that. So I'll open up the main menu controller script. And from here, we can handle what happens if a selection is made from the selection UI. Okay. So I'll just directly subscribe to the on selected event from here. And I'll just attach a function called on item selected. And let me define that function over here. Okay. It's pretty much the same as what we did before. But in this case, we're just keeping things simple and directly attaching it from our selection UI script instead of attaching it from a separate state. Okay. So from here, if the selection is equal to equal to zero, that means the player selected continue. Otherwise, if the selection is equal to one, that means the player selected new game. And otherwise, if the selection is two, that means the player selected credits okay so if continue or new game is selected we have to go ahead and load the gameplay scene right the only difference is if continue is selected then after loading the gameplay scene we also have to load our game data right so let's implement that so from here first i'll go ahead and load the gameplay scene so let me import the scene management namespace to use the scene manager and I'll call the load scene function to load the gameplay scene. Okay, we can just load it by using the index. I'll pass the index as one. And let's actually set up the scenes in the build settings so that the indexes are right. So from here, let me go ahead and add the main menu scene and gameplay scene. So I'll go to the scenes folder and I'll add the main menu scene. And this will be the very first scene in our build settings because when we build the game, this should be the first scene that should be open when the player plays the game, right? The next scene will be the gameplay scene. All right, so the index of gameplay scene is one. So from here, we can call load scene and pass one for the index of the gameplay scene. Okay. So after loading the gameplay scene, we also have to load the game data, right? We can do that by calling saving system dot load function, and we can pass the save slot 
okay i believe the save slot that we use normally is called save slot one right so let's also use that here all right but if we just write like this then this line won't be executed because once we load another scene our main menu game object will be destroyed right so first we have to call don't destroy on load and pass our main menu game object and then once the loading is complete we can destroy it okay this will make sure that our main menu will only be destroyed after calling the load function okay so next let's implement the new game functionality so that's going to be pretty simple we have to load the game placing just like we did from continue and then we also have to delete the current save of the user right so we could do that by calling saving system dot delete and for the save slot I'll just pass save slot one all right so let's try testing this so from here if I select continue you can see that my previous save was loaded right we can actually test that by going to a different scene like this and if I save from here and then if I press continue from the main menu the player will start from here okay so now let's test new game so if I select new game then the player will start from this default scene okay so both continue and new game is working so next what I want to do is if the player doesn't have a save slot then they should not be able to select continue right this option should be disabled so to implement that we just have to check if there is any save slot so let's create a function for that in the saving system so in here I'll create a new public function called check if save exists okay so in this function we can check if the save file exists by calling the file dot access function and for the path we can get it by calling the get path function like this right we just have to return the value of this and that will check if there is a save file all right so now when setting the items we should only set all three items if the save slot exists right if there is no save slot then we should not pass the continue slot to the set items okay so from here I'll check if a slaving slot exists by calling check if save exists all right and if there is a save slot then we can pass all the text slots like before let me actually store this in a variable so that we don't have to call get component twice all right and if otherwise there are no save slot then we should not pass the continue slot we should only pass new game and credits right so what we can do is we can use text slots dot take last and pass two so this will skip the first item and take the last two items from the text slots okay so we need to convert this into a list all right and then just to indicate to the user that the continue button is not active we can just change its color to something like gray so first let me get the continue slot 
so we can get it from text slots dot first and then I can get the text from it okay and I can change its color to something like gray if a save slot does not exist all right so now in our selector there'll be three items if a save slot exists but if it does not exist then there'll only be two items right so we also have to handle that when a selection is made so from here what we can do is if a save slot does not exist so let me just copy this function and if a save slot does not exist then we can just increment the selection variable so that the first item will be new game and the second will be credits okay so let us try testing this now all right so now you can see that the continue option is disabled and I won't be able to select it right because I don't have a save slot but if I select a new game and if I just do a save now when I start a game the continue option should be active and I should be able to load the game by using it okay so that is working fine so again if I select a new game and then exit without saving the continue option should disappear because we don't have any save slot all right so that is working as expected so next I want to fix an issue so since we have the player controller active by default the player will move while we do our selection from the main menu all right so to prevent that what we can do is in the game controller we can set the default state as pause state instead of free roam all right and then we can change the state to free roam once new game or continue is selected okay so from here i'll call game controller dot state machine dot change state and i'll change the state to free roam once continue and new game is selected all right so that should fix the issue now the player shouldn't move during the selection from the main menu okay so yeah we are pretty much done with our main menu let me just make this UI a bit more interesting by adding a few images so I'll add an image of the player and a Pokemon okay so I'll add these two images like this and I'll just place the menu somewhere over here we can just remove the background and we can try to make it a bit bigger okay I'll also increase the font size so let us see how this looks you can spend more time and create a proper main menu I don't want to spend much time because this is just a tutorial all right so everything should work fine I can try going here and saving the scene okay and now the continue button should appear and if we select continue we should be loaded over here okay so we're done with the implementation of the main menu as I mentioned at the start this will be the final video for the series on YouTube and I'll be releasing tutorials for the series on patreon based on requests from supporters so if you're a supporter on patreon feel free to send in your requests i'll add them to the request list and cover them one by one so thank you so much for watching and supporting me in this journey i'll see you in the next video